we're going to solve a rational inequality. Here we have 2x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. So we need to solve for the type of x on the real number line that solves this inequality. The first thing to keep in mind is that when we're looking at a rational fraction, or rational expression rather, so a fraction like a over b, greater than or equal to 0, there are two cases to consider. The first one is that you have a positive value on the top and a positive value on the bottom. Or you could have zero on the top. And that would result in you getting a positive number overall, or perhaps zero, and you would satisfy this inequality. The second thing to consider is if A happened to give a negative value and B was also negative, then you'd have a negative number over a negative number, which would result in a positive value, so this would be preserved. And again, in that case, a could also be zero. Note, though, that we never want b to be zero because dividing by zero is bad. So with that in mind, let's look at this example, see if we can grab a solution. So case one is that the top is positive or the and the bottom is positive at the same time so that would be that 2x squared minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 and at the same time x squared minus 1 which is the bottom is also positive here I include the case where the top can be 0 but here I exclude the case where the bottom can be 0 because we have an inequality that includes equal to zero, it's all right if this side equals zero. And that will happen when, again, the top is zero and the bottom isn't. Cool. All right, so if we solve this part, we get x squared is greater than or equal to, we'll bring the one on over here, and then we'll divide both sides by two. So we get x squared is greater than or equal to one half. And when we solve the square equation, we don't just conclude then that x is greater than or equal to plus or minus root, uh, root 1 over 2, as we would normally want to do if there was an equal sign here. We have to use the fact that we're solving an inequality. So as a matter of fact, when you take the square root, you get the absolute value of x on this side is greater than or equal to the square root of this side, which I'll write as 1 over root 2. The same thing happens over here. x squared then has to be strictly greater than 1 for this part of case 1, which is going to give us the absolute value of x is greater than 1. Any difficulties with absolute value or needing to review, there's another video that you can take a look at, and I'll explain it in more detail there, and you'll get a better idea about why this turns into this, and this turns into this. But starting from here now, we have to consider what case one is going to look like. This must be true, and this must be true. So I'll draw a little number line that'll help me display what it looks like for both of those to be true. So here's zero, and then here's positive one over root two, and here's positive one. And then to the left, we have negative one over root two, and then we have negative one. What this is saying is it's saying that the size of x must be greater than or equal to 1 over root 2, which means that we may consider all values that are positive more so than 1 over root 2 and including 1 over root 2, or because we're talking about the size or absolute value of a number, we can also consider the absolute value or size being greater than 1 over root 2 on this side of the number line. Think about it. If we put in minus 10, and then we compute the absolute value of minus 10 into this inequality, we'll get 10. And 10 is certainly greater than or equal to 1 over root 2, as an example. Okay? So then we have that the absolute value of x is also greater than 1. We need that to be true at the same time. And that will look like these parts of the number line, not including 1, because we have the strict inequality. So it looks like we're looking at this part of the number line and this part of the number line. 
So for the numerator and denominator to both be positive, or for the numerator also to be zero, we have to consider values that match up for those two parts. What does that look like? Well, let's write it in a good set notation. So I'll get rid of this question. Hopefully you have it somewhere maybe written down. I can always go back. Get rid of this guy too. And then we'll write that, ooh, we'll write that case one can be written in set notation like so. So it's all x element of the reals such that here we have x must be strictly greater than one. Just reading off the number line. And here we have that x must be strictly less than minus one. So that's what happens when we combine those two bits together to make a fraction where the numerator and denominator were both positive and then we were able to satisfy our inequality that way. Now go back to that inequality, we have another case to consider, one more, which is again, remember when we said also, if you have a negative number on the numerator and a negative number on the denominator, the negative signs will cancel and you'll end up with a positive number which is what we're trying to look for, something that's greater than or equal to zero. So case two looks like this then. We need that the numerator, 2x squared minus one, is negative, or perhaps the numerator could be zero and we still win. And at the same time, the denominator needs to be a negative number as well and cannot be zero. So then x squared minus one has to be strictly less than zero. And if we solve these two cases in the same manner, then we'll get a case two, which will give us an alternative range of values of x that will work for that inequality. So if we solve here, we get x squared, and then we bring the one over, divide both sides by two, and that's less than or equal to one half. So similarly, the absolute value of x is less than or equal to one over root two. That is by the same reasoning as we used in the first example or first case. And then here we have x squared is less than one. So we jump then to say that the absolute value of x is less than the square root of one, which is one. And we have two different items to consider at the same time both must hold. And what does that look like? So again, here's my real number line. Very good, and then we start with zero, and we have an important point here, one over root two, an important part, point here is one, and we're considering absolute values, so we could have negative numbers involved, negative one over root two here, and negative one here. Now, this here is saying that x in size can equal one over root two, so that would be this point and this point for this case so far, or x must be smaller in size than one over root two. So that means that x can be anything closer to zero between minus one over root two and zero or between one over root two and zero, but it can't extend further out because these items on the real number line have a larger size than one over root two. Okay, last but not least, we have the absolute value of x is less than one. And if we plot that at the same time as this, then we just get these open circles because we're strictly less. And again, when absolute value is less, we're restricting the size of a number. So we get this part. How is it that this and this expression are the same, uh, at, excuse me, <laughs> are the, um, are true at the same time? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, that would be considering where they overlap on the number line. So to make these things hold both of them at the same time, we'll have to consider just this part of those solutions. And what does that look like? We'll write it right below case one. And while I'm erasing, give it a try and write it on your own. See what you get. And we will get all the elements x in the reals such that negative one over root two is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to one over root two. Because as you recall, or if you have it written down or go back, 
you'll remember that we had those two lines overlapping where we included negative one over root two and one over root two and then everything in between or everything smaller. Okay, so let me end my set bracket there and I have the two different cases. So either case one will occur and the X's that are, that's a horrible brush, then the X's that are included here will solve the inequality or we have case two here and these X's will solve the inequality. So there is a bit of a couple gaps on the real number line where you can't put X in and it won't work, but a lot of them will. So any X bigger than one, any X less than minus one, um, the, all these X's including zero will work. So there's small chunk. So a good exercise might be to draw out this entire solution on the real number line and you can give that a try if you like and just look at the little tiny parts that aren't included in this solution. The solution then to the inequality is going to be the set that looks like this. All x in the reals such that x is greater than 1 or x is less than minus 1 or perhaps this holds or minus 1 over root 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1 over root 2. That is a complicated inequality. It's not linear and it's fractional. So I guess you've got a couple of things there making it a little hairy. If you have any questions, let me know. And thank you for your patience and willingness to learn along with me in solving a rational inequality. The end.